Hello and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Amy Pickering and here are today's top stories. Caught in the act, Hampshire police force found to have their own criminal records. Southampton gets royal seal of approval. We see how Marwell is charging ahead with their wild new conservation scheme. And in sport, can Oxford add more misery to Eastleigh manager Ian Baird? We start today with an exclusive investigation. Winnell has uncovered some disturbing figures about Hampshire Police. Nearly 40 police officers have been found to have criminal records. Information obtained by Winnell shows that some serious offences such as ABH, possession of drugs and possession of offensive weapons have been committed by some of those who are in uniform. Our reporter Julie Cordier led the investigation. Today, Winchester News Online reveals that 38 serving officers in the Hampshire Police Force have criminal convictions. Documents released under the Freedom of Information Act show that two officers were previously convicted of possession of an offensive weapon, one of possessing ammunition which they weren't entitled to have, and one of causing actual bodily harm, the legal term for violent physical attack. Most of these offences took place before the offenders joined the police, but some did not. Our investigation centred on the number of police officers who have engaged in crimes involving violence and dishonesty. None of the individual offenders can be named and there is no suggestion that the Hampshire police have been involved in covering up any wrongdoing. But the official record shows that 15 officers have been previously convicted for offences involving dishonesty. The list includes theft, using forged official documents, driving without a license and having no insurance. Three further officers have been convicted of crimes related to drinking, one of disclosing personal data on the police national computer and one of possessing a cannabis plant. Hampshire Police have responded quickly to the news pointing out in a statement that they have stringent vetting procedures to make sure criminals do not get into the force. The police say that the convictions brought to light by our investigation do not, in their view, prevent the officers in question doing their jobs. And any officer, the police said, who failed to disclose any convictions could face very serious consequences. Despite this, Many will be shocked that some of the people we depend on to uphold the law were themselves once lawbreakers. Local people are to get advice on how to save money on their energy bills. Rising energy prices were the cause of a government meeting held this week where plans to help the public were announced. Tom Morgan takes us through what is a hot topic. As gas and electricity charges continue to rise for households across the country, consumers are starting to feel the pinch. Earlier this week, the UK's big six power firms were represented at a summit meeting, also attended by David Cameron and Energy Secretary and Eastleigh MP, Chris Hewn. Winchester's Citizen Advice Bureau offers help to local residents. In some respects, it's worse for Winchester because it's actually very expensive to be poor in Winchester. Everything's more expensive. If you're on a benefit-only income or a low income and you live in one of the most expensive cities in the country, then it's going to hit us quite hard. EDF Energy was just one of the suppliers that attended this week's summit. A spokesman for the company said EDF are committed to providing as much simplicity and transparency as possible to customers. Tom Morgan, Winchester News Online. Stanmore Library in Winchester is set to shut if volunteers cannot be found to run the service by December. The plan has caused controversy amongst those who want it to remain open. According to Hampshire County Council, the library has become too expensive to run. Princess Anne graced Southampton with a visit to officially open the new police station yesterday. Ali Al Jamri has the story. Princess Anne gave the royal seal of approval to Southampton's new police station yesterday. After a tour of the station, the Princess Royal unveiled a plaque commemorating its opening with Councillor Raymond, chairman of the Hampshire Police Authority. Today marks the final major milestone in what is one of the biggest projects we've ever undertaken and I'm extremely proud of the new Southampton Police Station, which many will know I refer to as my baby. Well, it's a pleasure to officially 
uh, open your new police station. <laughs> Ali El Jumri, Winchester News Online. Ongoing strikes and industrial action in Southampton could soon come to an end. The City Council and the unions met last week and have concluded a negotiation over pay cuts imposed by the Conservative led City Council. The final plan will be announced on the 4th of November. The unions will not issue any further strikes until this date. Local people have asked city councillors for more affordable housing. In an official move by Winchester Town Forum, residents are calling for a new housing strategy to be drawn up and presented at the next forum meeting on the 23rd of November. The strategy is aimed at first-time buyers trying to get a foot on the ladder. I think it's virtually impossible for first-time buyers to, to get a foot on the ladder in Winchester. The only opportunity will be looking at affordable housing schemes where there are shared equity and there are just a handful of those across Winchester. Residents are campaigning to lower the speed limit to 20 miles per hour in Winchester. This has been suggested in residential areas because of safety concerns. The suggestion has been brought to Winchester City Council's attention who will have to make the ultimate decision. And I hear you've got a couple of celebrities for us this week, Ali. I do indeed. But first, we start with football and the FA Cup, as Eastley look to put an end to some poor form which sees them out of the Hampshire Senior Cup and sitting just outside relegation in the Blue Square South table. Dale Gornell reports from Eastley, where Oxford City were the visitors. Eastley have had a poor start to their league campaign, and we're looking for some better form in the FA Cup this weekend against Oxford City. Basham's onside, easily caught napping, and Steve Basham has lifted Oxford into the lead, and it's a nightmare start for the Spitfires. Easily manager Ian Baird, less than impressed. Baird has been critical of his side when it comes to taking chances this season, and the Spitfires were at it again, failing to convert from this scramble. Andrew White's in the boy into the stands after a succession of efforts. Oxford were then given a chance to double their lead from the spot after White was adjudged to a trip Darren Pond in the box. Basham then looking for his second. Saved by Barford and he stopped the rebound. Barford has done it again for Eastley. Terrific saves. This seemed to kickstart the home side into life with Captain Jordan having this effort cleared off the line. Oh. Eastley's surely defending was again exposed with Darren Pond finishing emphatically to double City's lead. And there is Darren Pond. Goodness me, what a finish! A goal worthy of any FA Cup tie by Darren Pond. Eastley were then handed a lifeline after Jamie Brown was bundled over in the box. No mistake from Slabber, it's 2-1 and Eastley are right back in the game. Slabber with his fourth of the season. However, any hopes of a comeback were crushed when Pond rose highest in the box to restore the two-goal lead. The game ending 3-1 to Oxford City. Dale Corner, Winchester News Online. Despite that result, there has been some good news for Eastleigh supporters after 17-year-old Fulham target Sam Wilson signed a two-year deal before the game. Wilson told us how he felt about the signing, despite reports linking him with a move away from Hampshire. Yeah, I'm very happy I can finally finalise being at Eastleigh and make sure that I stay here for another two years. Whenever another club comes in for me, I'm not having my control in it, so just happy to sign. Basingstoke were also in cup action at the weekend at home to Hartley Wintney. The hosts took a 4-0 lead into half-time, courtesy of goals from Wes Daly, David Pratt, Sean McCauley and a header from striker Tim Sills. No more goals were scored in the second half, and the win sees Basingstoke progress to the next round and win £7,500 in prize money. Alsford was home to a former international cricketer on Friday. Henry Olonga played 80 matches for Zimbabwe and is known for his protest during the 2003 World Cup against Mugabe's regime. Multifaceted. We we're standing up against the tyranny in Zimbabwe. 
which covers a lot of bases. You're talking about human rights abuses in the early 80s, you're talking about week, corruption yeah. in government in the 90s, you're talking about the war in the DRC. Premier League campaign. And finally from this week, we have ice hockey as the Basingstoke Bison continue their English Premier League campaign. The Telford Tigers were the visitors at the weekend and Michael Connolly had the pleasure of being at the match. Fresh off the back of three consecutive defeats, the Bison welcomed the Telford Tigers to the Planet Ice Arena, knowing that they need to put some points on the board. And after a disappointing opening from both teams, Marcel Petran put Basingstoke 1-0 up, scoring the only goal in the opening 20 minutes. The second period provided a lot more action though, and despite Telford being on top for the opening few minutes, Tribe put the Bison 2-0 up. Shortly after though, Telford surprised the hosts, making it 2-1. And only a few minutes later, Oakford made it 3-1, closely followed by Steve Moria putting the Bison 4-1 up. And then Miller completed the second period route with Basingstoke's fifth. And then Chong got Basingstoke's sixth. And Dubeck added a seventh. In a very intense game with a lot of hard hitting, Wiggins got taken off the ice after this brawl with Telford's number 20. Although it was Telford who got the final goal of the match, albeit a consolation, making it 7-2. But there was still time for another scrap. Bruce and Miller this time trading punches. I think I'll let you decide who won this one. So Basingstoke end their three-game losing streak with an emphatic 7-2 win. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. And that's it for sports this week. Back to you, Amy. Thanks, Ali. Well, from one horned beast to another, Marwell Wildlife Park, just outside of Winchester, is leading the fight against poachers targeting rhinos in Africa. Felicity Houston went down to Marwell to meet the rhinos herself. Penny the bull rhino is warm and safe in his enclosure, but rhinos in the wild are not so lucky. Over 800 rhinos have lost their lives to poachers. That's almost one a day in the past three years. In response to this, Marwa Wildlife have launched a new appeal to try and help combat the threat of extinction that these creatures face. The appeal is working to draw attention to an ongoing conservation effort between Marwa and another African wildlife trust. Rhinos are a prime target for poachers because their horns are extremely valuable. The trespassers have begun to use silent weapons like poisons and even crossbows to avoid being caught by park rangers. It's not a nice way, it is done nastily. Um, obviously they do tend to lose a lot of blood and they do tend to die when they are still alive. These horns are being removed and it isn't acceptable and it, it shouldn't happen. Help Us Save the Rhinos is aiming to train rangers to help them put a stop to the cruel practice of poaching once and for all. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online. To see more award-winning news and sport and this week's Win Our Life, don't forget to log on to our website www.winol.co.uk Goodbye.